I'm not medically trained. I am a computer network engineer by trade, um, and I volunteer and um, an ambassador for the Public Health Collaboration. Uh, so this is about the, the real food movement. I've been asked to tell a little bit about my story and my journey. Um, Back in 2015, I weighed 15 and a half stone. Um, so that's me on holiday and in work. Um, and things were getting snug and a little bit bigger, and I put it down to, well, you're just getting older. You just turned 15. I was feeling a little bit sluggish, and I thought, yeah, there's nothing, you know, I'm all right, I'm just a bit bigger, it's older, married, I'm settled, normal. Um, like most folks, avoided the doctor. However, um, I did, that did catch up with me, um, and I'll, I'll talk about that a bit later. In January, I thought, I've had enough of this feeling sluggish, I'm going to do something about it, I'm going to join the gym, I'm going to change what I eat. Now, my engineering brain said, let's do some research and find out what's a good diet. And I came across this, the lovely Eat Well diet. And that's a typical day's menu for me there. Yeah. It's low-fat yogurts, no added sugar juice, toast or packet porridge for stuff you nuke in the microwave for two minutes. Um, and a typical office worker is always you know, biscuits in the office and things like that. So I started that and I lost a bit of weight. And I was going to the gym and I thought, yeah, that's great. And then the motivation waned and the gym stopped. And the weight started to creep back up really, really quickly. I went to the doctor, and on 16th of June, I was told my A1C is 62. And I said, well, what does that mean? And they explained I was a type 2 diabetic. And like most people sitting there in the doctors, I'm like a rabbit in the headlights, and they give me all these numbers and meanings and things, and they're saying, right, here's a prescription. You're going to be on these tablets. You're going to come back for blood tests every couple of months, or maybe once or twice a year. And you can go and see a dietitian, you can go to diabetic education if you want. And I thought, oh, well, yeah, okay. And I went home and I, I told my family, told my wife and the kids. And, you know, like most people, they said, well, it can't be that bad. You're just on tablets. So it's not really too serious, you know. Um, and then I came across this guy, Jamie Oliver. And I remember this program he did called Sugar Rush, and this was the start of Jamie Oliver's campaign um, about sugar. And it was all about diabetic amputation. And that scared the living daylights out of me. Here's some more scary numbers about the rate of diabetic amputation across the country. And I thought, well, I'm quite attached to my feet and I want to stay that way. I, I should really do something about this. Surely, you know, there's more that I can do. I did more research and found out the classical definition for diabetes. Chronic progressive disease leads to all these sort of horrible things that can happen to people. But nobody actually said that to me. I think they didn't want to scare me off. That was never mentioned to me. And that I found that out by doing my own little bit of research. A month after diagnosis, I saw this. BBC screen this. I was like, oh, program about type 2 diabetes, go watch that. Who's seen this? Oh, that's great, there's quite a few people there. This changed my life. This guy was semi-retired, he used to work for BT, he was an engineer, did a similar job to me, and he had a similar diet to me, looking at his shop and trolley on the, on the program. And they managed to turn this guy's life around. And I thought, there's definitely something in this. How can I find out more? So again, more research. I came across this guy. This guy was on Sky News. I mean, here's a cardiologist telling me to eat fat. I was like, what? So I thought, well, that's quite interesting. So I, I downloaded this film and I'll watch Big Fat Fix. And that was it. That started me looking even more. I came across this chap. And he got to spot a bother for talking about little carbs. <laughs> Some of you may know. I think he's a lovely, absolutely lovely guy. So I bought this book, The Real Meal Revolution. I read that, I thought that's fascinating. And then I came across this guy. When, when I was like, and what I liked about Mike was he experiments on himself. He does this on TV and shows people the results. And I thought, wow, definitely, definitely got to try this. But I'm quite practically minded, so where do I start? I've got no chance of meeting these people. 
these are all people on telly and stuff like that. I wanted someone local. I wanted someone I could go and talk to. <coughs> I came past these two. David Unwin and Joanne McCormack. Now, I work in Warrington, and Joe McCormack was starting a low car group in Warrington. So I got in touch with him and said, Look, well, I'm not patient of yours, but is there any chance I can come along to your group? I just got recently diagnosed this time too. And she said, Yeah, fine, come along. You know, and, and that was it, that was my starting point. When I met Joe, she said, Do you do your blood tests? Do you, mon do you monitor your, your blood sugar level? Yeah? I'd recommend it. And I think this is something that all type twos should be doing, just to see the effect of what you're eating and what it does to your blood sugar levels. I think that's a really clear, clear indicator. So I started, and again, engineering approach to this, I ran a proof of concept on myself. I made some low carb granola. I mean, I never even knew you could make cereal, I forgot to say. But low carb granola, and I compared it to two Weetabix. Now, the reason I picked Weetabix is, if we look on the box, all those lovely traffic lights on the front are green. Now, that's not normally how I would eat Weetabix. I would normally have that with a load of raisins on the top or a banana or something like that. But I thought, no, no, let's just keep it simple and let's see what happens. So I did it, and I've tested with my meter, and it comes out like that. And that's the Weetabix without the fruit added. Oh, there's definitely something in this. I thought, right, I'm going to extend this proof of concept. So I started making swaps. Small stages, small changes. So frozen chips, made chips out of sweet. Swap the uh, no added sugar cordial for sparkling water with ice and lemon or lime. Convenient rice onto cauliflower rice. And in fact, the interesting thing about this is when I did this, my wife, so, what, you're making make rice out of cauliflower? That's a bit weird, isn't it? I said, we'll try some. And we don't buy that stuff anymore. She prefers this as well. Potatoes, celeriac, you can make a lovely celeriac mash. Real fish. Not very label friendly, some of these, though, because they're quite red and that. But, uh, if you're, if you're a type 2 and you're a low carb or a real food, you should be looking at the ingredients on the back and not necessarily the traffic lights on the front. And of course, <laughs> swap that. And that is a glass of red wine, it's not a pint of red wine. <laughs> so I started making these small changes, and I noticed that these small changes would start to add up, and I would start to feel a lot better, a lot livelier. Um, clothes were getting bad yet. <coughs> This, this seems to be working. So, the other side of it was, I needed to move more. And so I started walking every day. Really, really simply, just get up, walk around the block, it takes 10 minutes before I went to work, before I had any food. And I built up that, and that time, and at the, at the weekends when I had more time, I was walking an hour, hour and a half, on the Saturday and the Sunday. A year ago, I was lucky enough to uh, attend a talk by Dr. Simon Tobin and uh, Tom Williams, who who's, uh, uh, works for Parkham. And I've heard of Parkham, and it was one of those things, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, I know, that means getting up early on a Saturday morning and getting out of bed and going to some park and running around, that sounds like, yeah, that sounds like effort. Um, but I thought, no, 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 let's give this a go. So I went, and on my very first Parkham, I walked around. I walked around with a, a lady called Eileen, who's 68, and she walks the parkrun course every week. Doesn't matter what the weather is, she walks it. And I had a fantastic time chatting to her. And I thought, well, I quite like this. So I went back the week after. And the week after that, um, in six weeks' time, I've done 50 of these. Um, and now walk, jog, shuffle, run my way around. The first time it took me an hour, I can now do this in 35 minutes. So that also had a tremendous impact on me. But that, combined with the changes I've made in my food, enabled me to do this. So this is a copy of my HbA1c graph, um, and as you can see there, 62 on diagnosis. Following a real food and low carb, and note there I'm saying low carb, not no carb. I was down to 39 within three months. So 39 is, to accept all purposes, 
and, and normal blood sugar reading. And the practice nurse who saw me looked at it and she said, yeah, oh, that's very good. Keep taking those tablets. And I thought, what? <laughs> Hang on a minute. When we were here, I made a note. I mean, you said anything below 40 is, you know, it's classed as normal. Why do I need to still take the tablets? Yeah, you're never going to keep this up. This is a fad. You'll never keep this way of eating up. Um, so that was a bit disappointing. She did agree to cut my metformin by half. I said, yeah. okay, fair enough. <coughs> I said, I'll see you in three months. And then I saw her three months after that. And as you can see, time went on. A year later, I came up on metabolism. Because they saw that, effectively, I was a diabetic remission. Um, and this year, I've been really boring. It's gone very flat line on me. I'm still at 35. Um, so I was really excited about that. I have to thank Dr. Aaron for, for printing these graphs up for me because I go and mind them now. And I, I think he'd, he'd, he'd look at the appointments and see how I'm coming and go, oh my God, he's going to ask me questions. Um, so, so I'm really, really chuffed with that. Um, all this led me to think, why wasn't I told this in the first place? Why am I the medical community saying to me, you're a diabetic, here are your list of options. Now, Thankfully, things are getting better, and there's an awful lot of GPs who approach this and say, yes, we can do X, Y, and Z. However, have you tried changing what you eat? Have you tried moving more? And that's what public health collaboration um, is basically about. Trying to improve outcomes by educating people to eat real food. And we work <coughs> with GPs, practice nurses, and the public. This is taken from this year's conference. Um, quite a few familiar faces on there. So I volunteered for VHC, um, and that meant going to work at the conferences. And a couple of years ago, Sam, the, the, uh, the chief exec of um, VHC, created the ambassador program. And I went, yeah, come on, I'll have some of that. That sounds good. I didn't know what it was. Um, and I said, yeah, I'll sign up for that. And basically, we'd go and try and do events like this, or go and speak to, to nurses or doctors or anyone who listen really, and, and tell them about the, uh, the impact that real food can have on people's lifestyle. So this is me in action. Um, so this is one of my low-carb groups, um, quite well attended, really keen people on there. And here I am because I got invited to my local GP practice net network, and I've spoken to a few GP networks now. And there's the lovely Dr. David Ullman's infographics there in my hand that I always hand out, they're brilliant. Um, and so I've been doing this uh, while working full time as well, um, and get some really, really interesting results from it. In fact, here's a group of the practices that I work with in Liverpool. I not only work with practices in Liverpool, I also do sessions via Skype, and I've worked with GPs up in Scotland and down in London, and basically I'll talk to anyone who's willing to listen to me. Um, so, <coughs> I've got some new projects coming up with the, some of these practices that hopefully I'll be able to talk about <coughs> a bit more um, in, in about a month's time. I'd like to finish um, by just sharing um, a couple of examples. This is Brian, and I like Brian, he's a very happy chap. Um, he joined the low carb group, and this is what happened to him within a month of going low carb. He was type 2, di or he's type two diabetic. He was insulin dependent. And by following low carb, he's dropped his insulin dose by over 50% within a month, just through changing what he eats. And he started again, really simply, small changes, seeing what was a good fit for him, what he did like, what he didn't like, what were, and he, he had a meter, so he was testing as he went along. So there's Brian, and I'd like to leave you with this. Now, Pam said I could post this. Pam. Um, here I want to see was 108. And that's a dramatic drop down to 40. And she's now off her meds, her blood pressure's fine, her lipid profile's great, and then she, she's got that dreadful low carb side effect of losing weight as well. <laughs> um, it seems to happen to an awful lot of us. So I can sum this up really easily in three simple steps, and they are eat real food, avoid fake food, and be active. 